Here we find the great huntress Angela, stalking her prey amongst her preferred terrain, stacks and stacks of board games. Today, she is in pursuit of a prey that is most dangerous, the elusive Dungeons and Dragons Manticore. This creature is known for being a hybrid of very dangerous creatures, and what is that? She has heard it! Having heard her prey, she leaps into action. And there is the beast. Having revealed itself, it is truly terrifying. The hunter, though, has laid her eyes upon her quarry. Unsure of how to approach, she pauses, thinking. But she knows what she must do. She raises her weapon. But she is nervous. She loses the arrow. The beast, it is mortally wounded. She stalks forward to lay the killing blow. Hey guys, I'm Angela and welcome back to another Hobby Night episode. This week we're going to have a very special painting video where we're going to be painting the WizKid Paint Night Manticore Kit in partnership with Games of Berkeley as we are going to have another contest where you can actually participate and paint along with me. So you can pick up this kit from Games of Berkeley or your friendly local game store that may be participating. You can find the details for that on whizkids.com to see all participating locations. Um, but you can get this from Games of Berkeley, which is what who we're working with. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint this using the colors that are in the box, but you guys are allowed to paint it however you would like. You can either use this kit or the colors that you have at home already. You need to submit your pictures of your painted Manticore mini to the Games of Berkeley Discord server. Um, I will have a link for that in the description below. And the winner of the contest will be chosen randomly um, from all of the submissions. And that person will win a $20 gift code to our uh, the Games of Berkeley web store, where you can buy whatever it is your heart's desires from our very massive online catalog, where we sell games, puzzles, plush, dice, all sorts of great things. And of course, if you're a fan of this channel, we also sell Warhammer. So you can go and pick some of that up as well. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at what's inside this and get painting. So let's take a look at what the kit comes with. Of course, we have our Manticore, who is actually quite detailed and has a lot of texture going on with him. So I'm pretty excited to have this painting challenge to be able to paint this miniature using just what they've provided. Now, I'm not going to be using the brushes or the water cup or the palette they provide, um, although you absolutely can. I just have my own, but I am going to be using the paints. Now, they do give you two brushes. One is a base coat brush. One is more of a fine detail brush. You've got a water cup with a lid, which is very nice because you can seal it if you're on the go. And you can actually use that tray there to mix your paints. There's three little holes there for you to be able to do so. But the important thing is to pay attention to what paints we have today. It's a very warm color palette. There are lots of oranges, yellows, and browns. In, even our whites are still a beigey color tone, which leads towards that warm color palette. I am going to, this is going to be a challenge for me because I tend to mix my colors. I use a lot of contrasting colors and I don't have that opportunity here with what they've provided me as readily as I would with if I was just using my contrast paints that I like to use. So I actually planned this project out on paper prior to going forward with it a little bit more so than I normally do because I wanted to make sure that I had a way to emphasize the texture and variety that was happening on this miniature. The paint that we're going to start with is the dark skin tone. As you can see, I'm layering this on to both the body as well as the face as sort of a good foundation color for layering additional colors on top as we go forward. I did this in two layers. I had to thin the Vallejo paint that I'm working with, which is what the kit provided. And I really actually like it. It's a very creamy paint, oddly enough, um, but it did require a lot of thinning. Um, with water and everything. Now that we have our base coat for the body, we're gonna go ahead and move on to our dark sienna and apply this to the mane again as our foundation color. Any spikes or anything that make it covered up with this color, we'll clean up later. So we're not going to worry about it too much here. Just make sure you get a solid coverage. Our first two base coats are done and I think he's looking pretty good. Now, I do wanna point out, I did accidentally rub some paint off on the feet here as I was handling this miniature, painting the mane and everything. And just be careful if that happens, you can always go back and touch it up, but it is something to be aware of that can happen as you're painting. Now, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the base coat for our wings using the dwarf skin color, which is this really nice orange color 
that I really wanted to emphasize and keep separate, so we're only going to use this here. As I was going through my planning phase, I found that it was important for me to keep a couple of colors that I would only use in select locations on the miniature so that I could get some actual good variety and emphasize things appropriately, despite the fact that I felt like my color palette was very limited. But this allows me to push that color palette and actually play with some of these and really emphasize some of those colors. Now that we have our three base coats down, we're going to go ahead and apply a couple of washes. We're going to start with the flesh shade and we're going to put that over the entire body and wing of the miniature. Now you might notice I am not doing too much more work on the wings other than applying this wash because we're going to skip all the bone and spike details for later. I do kind of struggle with the wings. It is the biggest challenge for me on this because I really want them to stand out and it becomes a little difficult for me with my color palette. So we're going to avoid those until probably near the end. We're going to then apply our sepia wash to the mane because I wanted to darken it and kind of differentiate it from the body. And I didn't want it to have that red tone that the flesh shade had. He's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with where the washes are going, but we're really not getting too much detail out of the miniature quite yet. And we're going to work on that by applying a couple of dry brushes to the body. Starting with a heavy dry brush of our heavy ochre color and then layering that a little lighter with our pale yellow, which will give us a very nice, very lion looking color to his fur, which I really want to emphasize as that is one of the main components of a manticore. Next, we're going to move on to tan, which we're going to apply as the mid-range color on the mane. So we're going to go ahead and apply this again fairly heavily over the entire thing, not really caring if we get any paint on the spikes because we'll clean those up later. I found that while I was painting the mane, it was very important for me to move the brush in as many different directions against it as possible to apply the paint, because otherwise there were complete sections that I would just entirely miss if I only went from one angle. Lastly, we're going to apply Filthy Brown as our highlight color to the mane, trying to go a little bit lighter than we did previously, only picking the most raised edges of the miniature. Now it's time to move on to completing the face. So we're going to go ahead and grab cadmium skin and apply this as a light dry brush over the face. And again, this is one of those colors that we're only using in this location to really emphasize the human nature of the manticore's face and draw some attention to it and give it that peachy color tone. So as you can see, our dry brush is looking pretty good. I'm fairly pleased with it, but now we need to move on to actually painting the wings. And after a lot of debate and talking it over and kind of going through my colors, I decided that what I needed to do was blend and kind of build some texture on top of these colors and make it work as best as I can. So how I did that was I'm going to apply our filthy brown color back over top, or sorry, not filthy brown, dark sienna onto the bottom and top portions of the muscly portion of the wing. He's got these bat wings that then go into these weird bone spikes because he's a manticore and they have a lot of bone protrusions and everything like that. And it's kind of an odd combination at the joint portion at the center of the wing, but I'm going to make it work as best as I can. And one of the things that we're going to do now is apply off white to the all of the bone protrusions on the miniature, which actually was not my original intention. I had actually wanted to apply the uh, bone color that had come in the kit, but by the time that I had gotten to the tail spikes, I realized I was using the wrong color. So I'm going to use the bone white as a dry brush later on. What we're going to do now is take our dwarf skin and actually tackle the mouth because while I was doing this off-white color, I realized, oh, I should probably paint his teeth while I'm doing this. And I don't actually have a good color to use in the mouth. They didn't give me a red in the kit, which honestly, if I had one complaint, that's the one color I wish they had given me. I don't actually mind that they didn't give me a black or anything like that because I don't think I really need to take any of my colors too much darker. But having a red would have been really nice because then I could have mixed some other oranges. I could have used red in the mouth and had a little bit more variety. 
Now that the mouth is done and we've applied it to the white to the teeth, as well as getting that inner portion, we're going to go back to our flesh shade and apply this over all of the bone portions that we did. Because like I said, I messed up. I used the wrong color and these are a lot brighter than I want them to be. So by applying this wash, it's going to dull down that color and make it look a little bit more like bone. Because the joint portion was the portion of the miniature that actually like caused me the most frustration when I was painting this mini, I went ahead and applied a second layer of the wash to try to give a nice blend between the brown and the white, which I will then emphasize as we go forward with a few more dry brushes as I continue to work on the wings, because there's still a bit more that I'm going to do to them because I'm still not fully satisfied with how it's looking. I'm gonna go ahead and now and add that bone white dry brush that I had mentioned earlier. We're gonna apply this to the wings as well as the spikes in both his tail and his mane. And we're not going to do this on the teeth or the claws. I felt like those were okay as they were and they're so small that I don't really think it would be super noticeable even if I did it. And I didn't wanna mess up any of those colors that I had done on the face or anything. So we just avoided those. We're also going to take the bone white and apply it to the base of the miniature because I sort of debated what I wanted to do if I wanted to go dark brown and do dirt or if I wanted to do more of a sandstone, which is ultimately what I chose because I really wanted to emphasize the sort of desert feel of these. Manticores originally come from, I believe, Persia. And so I really wanted to go with that vibe with the basing. And this will allow me to do maybe some fun sand things later if I decide to add to the miniature after I'm done with it. We're going to continue our dry brushing now though, because I really want to make these wings work, still not quite satisfied with them. So we're gonna grab our ochre color and apply it and try to blend in that brown tone with the color we did on the body. Because ultimately I decided the best way to go about it was to blend the colors that I'd use on the mane and the body on the wings and just make it as cohesive as possible. And I think it worked. The last thing that we're going to do is take filthy brown and pale yellow and apply those as two small dots in the eyes to give him sort of an amber glowing eye feel. And I think I got it looking pretty nice. After a long hunt, here is our trophy. And honestly, this was quite a challenge for me. I am satisfied with the way that he came out, but it's not my best miniature and while I actually do overall really like what I ended up accomplishing with this, because honestly, using paints that I have not used in a really long time, um, painting this in a more traditional way that I'm just not accustomed to, as I am a uh, very, very good fan of contrast. Even. I know, I know, but I do love them. Um, but this ended up being very, very cool experience, a little bit of a frustrating experience. Um, but overall, I do think I am satisfied with how he turned out. It's not the color palette I would have originally picked. Had I not done the challenge of using what was in the kit, I probably would have gone a lot brighter, um, much more saturated colors. I like the color palettes they gave us. It's just so neutral and it just, I don't know, it's not my favorite thing that I've done. but. I can't wait to see what you guys are doing for it because you can use whatever colors you want. You can also use the kit and I'm really curious to see what other people do with the colors that WizKids has provided because it is relatively limited of a palette and it was very fun and challenging to work with. So I'm curious to see what everybody else is going to be doing. Make sure to submit your photos of your finished Manticore between September 1st and the 14th of 2020. Um, that is when the contest is running and everything. And make sure to put them in the painting channel on our Discord server, of course. We will show all of those uh, details in the uh, description below and everything, so make sure to check that out if you have any other questions. And I hope to see you guys next time.